That is such disappointment. Sonoda pulls off before we'd even taken the lights, and surely we will have to send them round again. Uh, failure, AG failure. Copy. This is on board with Yuki Sonoda. And that is the sound of your Grand Prix ending before you'd even formed up on the grid. Here come the five red lights in Monza. And the Italian Grand Prix is go! With a good reaction time for one Ferrari, make that two Ferraris. Max Verstappen is breaking out of the slipstream. He's going to contend with Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz down to turn one. Sainz is first, then it's Verstappen, then George Russell is on the inside. But Charles Leclerc has the power to hang on to third position as they all make it through the first chicane. Sainz holds the lead. Brilliant start, brilliant defence, and Charles Leclerc there still having to uh, battle with George Russell as he go down to the second chicane. Looks like he's going to maintain that position. The door is a little bit open for Perez to have a look, but uh, amazingly, they seem to have got through the first couple of chicanes with no sign of any contact. Alexander Albon, who's trying to use that incredible straight line speed of the Williams to clear the slightly draggier McLaren ahead, and he's got a good run, DC. He has indeed. He pulled a slightly different line off the first chicane. He's going to be forced to the outside in the braking zone for the bridge. This would be remarkable if he pulls it off. We go on board with Alex Albon, who gets up to sixth position with a super move. That was brave. It was precise. Absolutely brilliant from Alex. Now there's a run for Max. Yeah, it loses out through the middle of the corner inevitably as you've then got the turbulent air off the back of Sainz. Well, he's going to have DRS. He'll start to gain massively in this phase. Is he brave enough to have a go? He's going to be sent the long way round by Carlos Sainz, who is desperate to hang on to the lead of the Grand Prix. And that is an elbow thrown by the Ferrari. Would Sainz be aggressive was the question. There's your answer. Max there, slightly compromised the braking. Sainz left enough room for him to try and wiggle his way around the outside, but he wasn't carrying the momentum. Uh, Mr. Carlos is going defensive again. That's taking away any confidence from Max to lunge it. Perez gets to the inside of Russell, but they were both off the road, trying to make the corner at the first chicane. And Perez will be arguing, well, we both went off. Russell will say he overtook me off the racetrack. He pushed me off. OK, so more aggressive on the braking this time. Goes to turn... Well, OK, Checko, good good attempt to get the referee on side, but uh, you were never making the apex. And Verstappen, who forced a defensive move from Carlos Sainz one lap ago. Carlos Sainz having a look in the mirror. Verstappen getting close, and he just immediately commits to the racing line. There's the first lockup we have seen from the race leader. That, a visual example of the pressure that he's under. And look at the momentum that Verstappen has got coming out of the first chicane, going through Curva Grande. Side by side, they run for the lead of the Grand Prix. And the Ferrari is inching back ahead, centimeters between the leading pair in the Italian Grand Prix and Max Verstappen takes the lead on the day that he chases history. He gets past the Ferrari, Sainz fights back, but there's nothing he can do. And the man who's chasing a perfect 10 is P1. Yeah, deployed nice and early. The electrical energy available coming off the first chicane. Then you can see the slippery Ferrari starts to outperform him as the speed builds. But in the end, he had the inside line. One lap later, and there's other... Whoa! This time, Perez gets to the part of the racetrack he's been chasing for so long, he gets to the inside, that's fourth place. Lando Norris is going to get past, and the undercut effective there. There is... Oh, he's going to throw one to the inside. It was tight. It's contact. contact between the McLarens at Monza, but it was Norris who got by. We're going to see Lando Norris on the outside. Lando leaves him space, and then you can see that contact of the tyres. As they go past the iconic timing tower on the left-hand side, the old grandstand in the middle, and then the next iconic timing tower with a red ball out of the slipstream, building up to 200 miles an hour and taking third place in the Grand Prix. Leclerc was thinking about the late lunch, wasn't able to do so, but one Ferrari slips off the podium. On board with Lewis Hamilton, a five-time winner of this Grand Prix, just trying to improve up to eighth place. Does he have the room? The answer's no. There's a lock-up. They're both over the road. And the story continues down to the Lesmos. Hamilton will say, well, look, he pushed me off and he never made the corner. 
Hamilton against Piastri, flat to the floor as we go through Curva Grande. He's looking for that inside line. Piastri gives him the squeeze, but you've got to give a car's length. Oh, contact. he's made contact! He's made contact off the road. They both go and damage for Oscar Piastri. Hamilton takes the place off the road. Another dramatic moment for Oscar Piastri's Grand Prix. If anyone has to apportion blame, I would say Lewis needed to give him a bit more space, which Carlos Sainz is not giving Checo Perez. Perez is going to risk the nose to the inside, and he bails out of the first chicane. And Sainz gets back to second place. Perez had to give him the position back, but this is getting tighter and tighter and tighter every time they go into the braking zone of the Retafilo. Hamilton now with that five-second penalty hanging over him. Cleared one McLaren. And now trying to clear the other one around the outside for Lewis Hamilton, who gets past Lando Norris. Best run he's had so far for second place. Oh, he thought about it, and Sainz went tight to the wall. Perez has got the DRS. Perez has got the place. At last, Sergio Perez slows the Red Bull down, and by the time he leaves the first chicane, he's up to second place in the Grand Prix. This is so close between the two Scarlet Ferraris who go on to the main straight. Charles Leclerc has got enormous momentum here. They're side by side at Monza and Charles Leclerc is moving ahead. He's got the inside line. Charles Leclerc takes third place in the Italian Grand Prix, but he's locked up to give another opportunity to Sainz who cranks on the steering wheel, looking for the line. The Mike oh, Edwards, how did he not make contact with his teammate there? I, I feel that I've just seen a ghost car. You know, the wheels, they must have been so close close to touching. Sainz has the inside line. Will he have the position? Lock up. Oh, they nearly made contact again. This is really aggressive stuff from the two teammates. As we check in on another move, this time for Lewis Hamilton. You see, it is possible to overtake a Williams in a straight line. He went the long way round at turn one. And no risk. No risk, race until the end, no risk. Is there a late lunge? There was! And he very nearly went into the back of his teammate. If that's Charles Leclerc's idea of no risk, my <laughs> word, it will be third for Carlos Sainz. That is the last real opportunity in the Italian Grand Prix for Leclerc to get past his teammate. We are witnessing something that no one has ever seen in the entire history of Formula One. A landmark for Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen wins 10 Grand Prix in a row to take the all-time record. And the Ferraris are scrapping all the way to the line. Unbelievable stuff. Perez is second, and it was one-tenth of a second between third and fourth. It is always absolutely thrilling. Monza putting on a show from first practice to the checkered flag and a moment of history written in the record books for Max Verstappen.